Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn what are static cursors in SQL Server. So before even we go to cur uh, static cursors, uh, let's uh, get the definition of cursors. Cursors are the objects uh, those allow us uh, to access the data row by row from result set. We save some results uh, and then uh, we want to extract the data from those results at but one row at a time and then static cursors make the copy of result sets and then do not reflect any changes if we made to original base table or tables data such as we insert a new record update a record or delete so once we select the data from by using the query from table or tables uh, and uh, that the result is saved into the memory the static cursors uh, will not go back to the original tables uh, and update uh, that data set so once it's done it will be saved in the memory and that's what the static cursor will be using static cursors uh, are scrollable that means we can select uh, the rows uh, from uh, very first row very last row we can select uh, if, if uh, uh, prior uh, row uh, we can select the next row relative absolute so these are all the different uh, ways uh, to select the records uh, from those cursor uh, at different uh, positions uh, of those rows uh, so we can do that let's go to the demo I have a video that uh, shows you what are the steps uh, of the cursor so I would uh, recommend uh, watching that video because if I will explain the things here this video is gonna be like 40 minutes uh, so I don't wanna go ahead and do it we have done uh, another 30 minute videos uh, so please go ahead and watch that video and here what I'm doing I'm creating a table and I'm inserting a couple of records here now let's go to the cursor and uh, I have declared these variables so why I have declared the variables because when we will select one row at a time we want to save those values into the variables so that's why we need the variable so I created these variable because this is the definition of my selector so I have a customer ID customer name street cities and state so that's exactly the variables I have created so if you, your query is different you will create the variables to save those uh, data point values for each of the row in those variables and here you will be saying declare cursor cursor that's uh, the normal way we do <coughs> excuse me and here you will be saying static keyword that's the way to uh, declare or use a static uh, cursor so you have to put a static keyword here next uh, you will be opening a cursor and you open a cursor uh, by using open cur um, and the cursor name so I have cursor name cur and then uh, here I'm printing just a statement I can comment this out next uh, we are fetching the very first row from the uh, result set and same in into the variables so here if you see that I'm saying uh, fetch next uh, that means I'm the I'm fetching the very first row so it is a uh, right now it is pointing before even that result set uh, so when you say fetch next uh, so it will bring us the very first one and then uh, we are checking the value of uh, this uh, global variable and uh, uh, if uh, that becomes uh, zero while it is zero it we will be in the loop and uh, once it's not zero it means that there are no more records uh, and uh, the loop will be terminated inside uh, the uh, loop uh, what I'm doing here I'm using a print uh, and I'm using concat function so concat function can be used to concatenate string or integer values uh, and, uh, and then use uh, I'm using print to print that values so I have a video on which uh, you know uh, you will learn how to use the concat function um, or uh, you use the plus sign uh, to concatenate string uh, uh, sorry integers uh, and string uh, values <coughs> excuse me so what we have here I'm uh, just concatenating all these column uh, sorry variable values and then also adding this uh, uh, hard code values in print time and date and time and then uh, I'm using get date function so I can show you the different times when I will print and then uh, we are fetching the next record from the cursor and uh, we are gonna print back again and it will be keep looping uh, till we have the records and once uh, uh, we don't have records uh, in the uh, cursor result set uh, this uh, loop will be finished uh, we come back here we close the cursor and uh, we remove from the memory by using the deallocate cursor name 
So if uh, let's uh, go back here and the two rows, rows are we have two rows in this uh, table. We have one with the Amir Shahzad and second with the M Raza. Now if I run this cursor, let's see what happened. So it is printing uh, the both rows uh, one after one. So why static cursors are important? One, let, let me give you an example. Let's say at 10 p.m. Uh, you want to send an email uh, for all the customers you have in one of the table. So uh, that extracted uh, 100,000 uh, rows and you start sending them email uh, uh, by using the cursor. So what happened? At, at the, the table didn't stop to insert or update or delete to the users. Uh, at 10, 10, uh, there are 10,000 more records they were inserted to the table. But uh, you are only interested uh, to send uh, the emails uh, what you extracted at 10 o'clock. So you don't care, uh, you don't uh, want uh, the any new records whatever are inserted in the table after 10 o'clock and you, you don't want to even include them in the, in the email list. So that's where you have provided static and once your query will run at 10 o'clock to extract those records and put into memory uh, and uh, the, that has extracted 100,000 records at 10, 10 p.m. So that's it. After that even the table is deleted or pe people has uh, uh, updated the record or they have inserted the new records. The cursor is not going to go back but they can keep working and maybe next day when you come at 10 o'clock you will be extracting whatever in the table is. So once you provide the static at that time you take those values from the table or tables and then just work with them. So you don't want to go back with the updated record after 5 minutes or 10 minutes and cursor is still open cursor will be open maybe for two hours but it will not go back to the base table to get the new records or updated records or deleted records okay so that's uh, pretty much enough for the cursor thing I want to show you one scrolling part real quick so static cursors are scrollable that means we can select the first last and all that from any position what we want let me show you this part quickly so right now I'm selecting as I said next so it selected the very first from the result set and then this next bring the next record so if I want to say just last I can select the last from here and then let me run this one so as I fetch the last record so my pointer is the pointing to the last record there is no next after that so that's what happened so it is only returning us the one uh, record that's the last one okay how about first if I will say first it took the first record from the um, cursor result set and then the next record uh, as we are fetching the next it, it, it fetched the next record okay how about here if I will say last as we see that uh, this is returning me last but uh, there is no next but I can go backwards so I can say pair now it returned me the we are going uh, uh, opposite direction so in the result set we have uh, Amir first uh, but uh, we, what we see we, we want to go backwards we selected last one first uh, and then uh, we are going to the um, up, uh, upwards uh, to the initial so we send prior so f give me the last one and then go uh, prior to that last so that's what we can do if uh, let's say I want to do or point in the middle of the cursor or some absolute values that I know so I can use absolute so absolute and then I have to provide the number so let's say if I will provide one so it's gonna take me to the very first row and then there is no prior because the first we there's the first record and there is no prior to the first but we can select the next here if we want so that way we can work or uh, let's say if I'm interested uh, to see the records uh, from number two and onwards uh, so I can say two here but as there is only two records uh, so we see on, um, only one record so let me insert one more <coughs> okay now we have three records so if I start at two and then uh, if I say next uh, so it's gonna start from two and then show the another next one so the third is John Smith right so if I will say one uh, that's the first record and then uh, if I will keep saying next next uh, so that's how it will work let's say here we say this is absolute one and then we say last 
okay so we kind of broke the entire thing it is coming here in the absolute one and then it is shown as the last one but it's not ending so let's close this query So uh, may make a sense uh, what you are trying to do here. Let's say uh, if we are fetching one, then uh, we want to do the next. Here, let me say um, one more thing. I want to say uh, absolute relative. Okay. So if uh, you are doing relative here, you started let's say with one. Um, yep. Let's say you said next, and then here. Or actually relative let's say I'm starting with the relative two so that's the kind of gap I'm given okay so you have the one from and then from relative uh, from there so you can have two jumps and then show that so if you have those kind of things so it's it did show the relative positions so uh, let's say there was the relative from our case uh, as it is pointing before for the cursor so with this relative two it bring us to the second row if we will say relative three so it will be bringing to the third one so we have only three records here in this case so you can scroll and jump between different result sets or to the any row by using these different options and scroll options especially uh, next, uh, uh, last, uh, first, uh, prior, absolute, and all that. I even you can go, let's say, in the absolute. Uh, yeah, yes. if you will say minus two, what happened then? Let's see if I, I'm interested. So, if you're saying absolute minus two, then uh, you see that it start from the bottom up. So, <clears throat> if uh, we say plus two, it take from the from the top to the bottom. So it start from the uh, now it is going to start from the second, uh, but uh, if we will go, let's say I go absolute minus one. So now it took uh, the last record from the uh, cursor record sets. So you can play with it and scroll it the way you want it and uh, according to your requirement. We are going to uh, keep this simple. We are going to keep next. Uh, uh, in this case, we are selecting the very first one and then keep fetching the next one. That's what we are going to do here. So we are all set here. <clears throat> one more thing uh, I want to say uh, I want to show you the printer uh, so I'm opening a cursor just printing this out here wait for delay so why why I have this one here when uh, I'm putting this uh, information here or the statement uh, I'm making the loop to wait for five seconds here at this point why I want to do it so I can take the advantage of uh, going back here and insert the new records delete the new records and uh, uh, update the records uh, if i need to and then show you there is would be no effect as the cursor is a uh, static so you see that uh, uh, the, the, this one uh, uh, did uh, took five seconds here but with the the print time it printed all together so if i will use the wait for delay inside the cursor it will keep waiting uh, till all the results are done and print all of them all together so if i will use uh, this raise uh, error uh, and this option with no wait uh, then what happen now it will print uh, every five seconds so let's see so cursor is open it is printing every five seconds uh, even uh, we are getting the mm, time is uh, like okay 10 53 a.m uh, it's not going to the seconds level it's not showing it we can change this to get date and time maybe um, but I don't want to spend time here um, we have a time function and uh, we can use it but let's say uh, in the minutes level but we, we, we see that uh, if we let's say we change to two seconds now we can see that uh, it is printing uh, after two seconds so we are with using raise error uh, we are able to print uh, right away with the, this uh, statement uh, if we will have just wait for delay and uh, um, the time here it will print uh, at the end uh, all of them uh, together so that is a little difficult to uh, show you how this uh, um, will affect uh, our um, printing and uh, work when we will insert or update or delete the records okay let's get to the scenarios now long video i'm uh, 
really sorry but uh, there are so many small things comes up and i have to show you so what i'm doing here so i just dropped the table i'm uh, inserting two records so we have two records right now and then uh, what i'm gonna do i'm going to run this uh, uh, cursor so if you see here we are having with the five second delay and uh, i'm going to run this one right now it's one one second two second three and all that I'm gonna go and insert a new record so I'm gonna go insert new record it is inserted still we are in the cursor but you see in the 10 second we were able to go back and uh, insert the record and it only showed us uh, only two records let's do it one more time now uh, let me go back and drop the table real quick or maybe we can increase the time a little bit let's make it 10 seconds so you can see what I'm doing here so now if we go here let's drop the table so we can insert only two records first now run the cursor so the cursor is running right now okay so it is two seconds are done three seconds are done and if we can see here cursor is open right now now if I go back uh, even uh, 10 seconds this is it printed the first one now let's go back and insert one more record so we insert the record now it has three records but we come here it is only printing two records even we were able to do in this short time let me do one more time 15 seconds i want to come back at the same time i want to show you the window so let's uh, go back here now we have two records okay and uh, let's run the cursor so now we are one second done two second done let's go back cursor is open at the moment we insert the new record and we have three records but uh, let's see how many records cursor will print cursor is going to print only two records because when we open the cursor here it uh, had selected the data already and uh, at that time there were only two records so uh, see at 30 it printed only two records so any change we made uh, to the table it did not reflect uh, that so now let's go back uh, now we have three records uh, in the curse uh, table if i will uh, go ahead and run the cursor now we ran the cursor and it has three records right so now what happened let me delete two records from here so i'm deleting two records two records are deleted we can see now it ha the table has only one record let's go back here and see what happened now cursor has printed the first record okay our expectation is okay it, we have deleted the records what should be happening so cursor is still uh, going to print uh, those three records as it selected those records before uh, uh, even uh, any operation happen and uh, at the time of uh, selection it had three records so it didn't care it didn't go back to the table and it's not updating the records uh, with the new records so at the time of selecting uh, when it selected those records put in the memory so that's all it care about so it is not going and uh, getting the new records from the base tables so that's what we understand all those are uh, things are um, even delete update and all let's insert these records back now we have three records and each of them has a uh, different name so Amir and Raza and John Smith and if we run this cursor right now and we go back here and update the uh, update these records all of them with no name so cursor is already open we can see that and now if we update this one we can see they are updated to n n no name but uh, cursor is uh, going to give us the records with the names so because we updated the records after we fetched the records here so we already selected these records put in the memory now cursor doesn't care about what we are doing in the base tables so we are updating we have updated but it is showing us the records it selected at the time we declare a cursor and open it so you can see that uh, it is shown as the correct names as uh, even we have uh, went back uh, and uh, uh, updated the record. Let's do one last test. So if uh, we run the cursor and uh, drop the table, what happened then? So let's say we run this cursor. It, it has three records with the no name. 
Now we come back here and drop the table. The table is dropped. Okay, no table exists anymore. But cursor is still working. So cursor is open. It is shown us with the no name as the last time we had a no name updated. So it is still working. So even table is not available. The base table is deleted. But cursor is still working because at the time when it selected the table was there. So it took those records, put into the memory in temp DB. And now it is extracting the records from that result set. So it doesn't care. Uh, if the table is dropped even or updated or deleted or inserted so whatever uh, the uh, dml operation has been done on the table it's not going to reflect those changes also if you have dropped the table the cursor will not care about it it will only care about the result set that you have saved in the memory and it's going to loop through them if uh, you will uh, um, close the cursor and try to reopen it yes it will fail uh, because uh, now it is you know uh, not going to find that uh, table and the uh, results uh, uh, wh what it will be going to use uh, for this uh, select query so th that 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 could be one option uh, so it is not going to refresh uh, the result set uh, uh, again from the base table or any changes from the base table if you make uh, once the cursor is uh, uh, ha have selected the data and uh, you have opened it so thanks very much for watching this video I'm sorry uh, it took a lot of time to make this video uh, but there are small small concepts such as uh, what is scrolling um, how to use the uh, um, wait for delay and uh, raise error to print this out uh, for you and how to use the concatenate function there are small small things you know it comes up and they are really handy when you are working as a real time and uh, you have this and now you comes in front and you have learned these uh, from somebody okay so uh, in the next video i'm going to talk about the dynamic uh, cursors uh, and uh, i will make that short uh, because we have explained a lot of stuff here and uh, i will refer to this video in the if somebody haven't watched it uh, in the other videos so that videos will be short thanks